During our trip in Australia, we visited the Access Health program of the Salvation Army. This short movie features the wide range of services they provide to people who use drugs and sex workers. What are the opening hours of the Needle Exchange program? The Needle Exchange program is 24-7 every day of the year. So there's always a person on the desk to provide the equipment and also to offer support, provide people with information, refer to other services. This is you know, the area that someone would come, come into. We have as much um, information on safer using and services that people can access as, as much as we can. People can dispose in here, people can collect what they want and then they can you know, ask the staff member what it is they're after. So we provide sterile water for injecting cotton for as a filter, but we also provide SteriFits and which you can see there, and also wheel filters, which we might be just at the back here, yeah. <laughs> so that you know for pills and that sort of thing. So we provide those two. We provide a spoon, which is often complained about because it's not very good, <laughs> and people lose their gear. But it's the best that we can offer. Um, syringes. And the most common, you know, one mil needle and syringe. We offer a range of different condoms and lube for people, different gauge needles for different injecting drug use. We have probably an increase in um, people who are injecting performance and image enhancing drugs through here. So we have, you know, the equipment that can be used for that. Our contacts for the 2012-2013 period uh, was around 40 to 50,000 contacts in the year, um, which included handing out over a million syringes in that financial year. One of the functions of Needle Exchange Program is to serve as a gateway to other services. Yes. Does this work here? Yes. How, how, how effective is this? You know, the role of the NSP worker is not to just hand out um, the equipment, but is also to offer um, information and referral for people based on what the person is seeking. We do not push anything on anyone. If someone is just here to pick up needles, that's all we do for them. But we're always here to offer further information and referral. There's been, I guess, a long history of uh, homelessness in the area since the end of World War II. Um, when a lot of the veterans came back to the area, which is where they saw an increase in uh, people living in rooming houses, but also an increase in people who were uh, sex working. In the 80s in, you know, in Melbourne and in uh, Australia, there was an increase in uh, heroin use so in and injecting drug use, um, which meant in the early, late 80s, early 90s, that's when we developed the needle and syringe program. This is just sort of a meeting room where we do um, health promotion drop-in groups. We run uh, Aboriginal, groups. So they do artwork like on the wall there. Um, they do basket weaving with you know uh, indigenous uh, elders. They do bead making and things like that while they see GPs and, and psychologists. What are the special needs of female clients, female drug users? The biggest thing would be violence. You know a lot of family violence, um, street-based violence associated with street sex working. Our 24-7 needle and syringe program is sort of the only 24-7 service in the area where women can present and uh, get support throughout the night as well if they've um, been um, experienced violence. So like I said we don't do appointments almost all of our services are based on drop-in. We run programs like a naloxone education pro program which is run through uh, in partnership with Harm Reduction Victoria which is our drug user um, peer uh, service in Victoria. They run uh, naloxone education workshops and our GP prescribes naloxone. Naloxone is um, uh, also goes under the product name of Narcan um, and it's an opiate antagonist so in Australia we uh, get that as a, a needle, a mini jet injection needle. We are giving people who inject drugs, the medication to be able to um, reverse that overdose. Through our service here, I think we've trained almost 130 people in naloxone and had reported about 15 reversals just in that sort of eight months. This is a, you know, a pretty standard clinic space. 
We have podiatrists, physios and dietitians. We have psychiatrists through a local hospital. We have psychologists through a private clinic. Um, we have social workers. We have uh, Indigenous health workers who all use the same space. All of our services are free of charge. We even offer financial support for people to get the medications or other services that they require. And we, we can do all pathology here. So we have, um, yeah, HIV testing, but we also have an infectious diseases clini clinic that happens here, which again is run on a partnership. Um, and we have a nurse here that can test weekly as well. Our infectious diseases clinic is all mostly based around hepatitis C, um, you know, management but also um, linking people into treatment. Just really basic tea and coffee that we can offer people. We offer showers as well uh, and I can show you down the back here. You know we have a little veggie garden project that some of the some of the patients are doing. This was funded by the council to do an indigenous art piece so some of the men from the rehab did this. There's still a generational mistrust of western model of health and of um, you know white clinic staff and that sort of thing, which is very understandable. So we work really hard to gain trust and engage with the community. The program next door to Access Health is the uh, Crisis Contact Centre. It's a 24-7 crisis response for people uh, for housing, escaping violence, uh, mental, acute mental health, acute substance use issues. 24-7 there's either a social worker that you can drop into up until 11 o'clock or midnight, or there's a phone number you can call to get emergency housing. So this is all of their space. Um, we offer family areas because often the waiting rooms aren't a nice space for young children to be hanging out in. So we can you know, offer this to families who are homeless um, and waiting for emergency accommodation through the crisis contact centre. So this is a weekly sort of turnover. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> The Department of Health um, provide us with syringes and containers and bins and um, uh, you know barrels and needles and that sort of thing, swabs. Um, and then we uh, have money through the Salvation Army to offer us um, water and filters, dairy filters and wheel filters. There's uh, public bins, so councils uh, fund for bins to be placed in public, you know, in streets, in public toilets and those sorts of things, um, or we ask for people to return them to the NSP. So of the, you know, a million, I think it was 1,100,000 needles that went out in 2012-2013, uh, there was about 500,000 returned to us specifically. Um, and then the rest were sort of returned to public disposals or other NSPs, or other you know health centres. Yeah. Uh, is is there any like tension with the local people in the neighbourhood because of uh, drug litter on the streets? Um, look, once upon a time there would have been before we you know promoted uh, public disposal and that sort of thing. But we have a really good relationship in this. You know, there's a really good community here in St Kilda. Um, you know, it's constant work to keep people, you know, involved and to promote the um, benefits of something like this. Okay.